there's a lot of controversy on breathing. In this video, I want to give you my professional point of view on uh, how to breathe and then you can make uh, your opinion depending on all the different sources that you have read. In the clinical practice, we recognize between three different areas for breathing. One is belly, the other one is thoracic, the last one is neck. There's no much discussion that breathing, say, from the neck isn't a healthy thing to do because basically every time you inhale, you'll see the shoulders that raise, meaning neck strain. And you don't want neck strain because of what I've called in my book um, posture rule number two that states that the neck cannot be too relaxed. The neck is meant to be relaxed. Therefore, breathing from the neck isn't the great thing to do. So the debate is more on thoracic versus belly. A lot of people, I mean in particular some yoga teachers and things, have observed, rightly so, that when you lie down relaxed, say for example when you sleep, you see the belly go up and down. But from this very true observation, they have derived wrong conclusions because they have mixed up the causes and the consequences, number one, and two, they haven't uh, sufficiently taken biomechanics into account. What I mean with that is the fact that your belly moves up and down does not mean that when you stand, you should use the belly as the motor function for breathing. Let me explain. When you lie down, there's no weight on your spine. Therefore, the spinal muscles can be relaxed uh, no matter what the, the pressure in the abdominal cavity is. Okay, that's because there's no weight to bear. But as soon as you go to a more vertical position, be it sitting or standing, the weight of your torso has to be borne by the lumbar vertebrae. And these lumbar vertebrae will be stabilized by two things. Thing number one is the action of the muscles in particular, but not only the, the spine extensors. Thing number two is the environmental pressure. In other words, the, how much pressure you have here in the abdominal cavity will, say, help relieve the, the back muscles. This is the principle behind the, the, the back belts. Whenever you manage to reduce the volume of the abdominal cavity by muscle action or external action, there's more pressure in there and therefore less muscle action. Therefore, if you apply the philosophy that you have observed to people who lie down, i.e. you start going back and forth with your belly when you breathe, the volume of the abdominal cavity goes like this and the pressure goes the other way around, i.e. there's sometimes high pressure, sometimes low pressure. And that makes that there's no stability in, in the lower back and therefore your lower back muscles have to do everything. And the result of this will be that as the lower back is unstable, there's a much bigger chance that you slump in the upper back, which will fold your lungs, you see? And folding your lungs will reduce your um, ability to breathe. So in my opinion, there's quite a lot of nonsense behind the advice to use your belly uh, to breathe. Instead, what you should do is, by managing pelvic tilt, yeah, make sure that there's stability in the um, lower belly by the action of the transverse abs, yeah, that will, say, maintain a high level of pressure in the abdominal cavity. That will also give support, dynamic support, to the diaphragm. And um, that will help stabilize your, um, your lower back muscles. And hence, have, as your lungs cannot increase from above, because that would be neck breathing, and you cannot push them from below, what's left? There's thoracic expansion left. And this is the thoracic breathing thing. So how do you train thoracic breathing? Well, the thing is you need to first stabilize your pelvis. And many people don't know how to do this pelvic tilt properly. Check out the description of this video. I've linked a, um, another video of mine with the four steps to learn this. But right now I'm just going to show you an exercise to learn thoracic breathing. You need to kneel and when you kneel, it's quite easy to have a, either a hollow back or a flat back. And from there, maintaining your flat back, you put your hands on your sides and you try and breathe against your hands. Like this. And you see there's an expansion here 
of your thoracic cage, you can also ask someone to stand behind you and put his or her hands on your ribs so that you breathe against them. And your goal is to kind of feel that when you breathe, your thoracic cage goes like this. You know, it expands to the side. And thereby, your belly is not contracted, but it is mobilized and it ensures that there's sufficient pressure here. When I was still a paramedical student, we had an exercise in which we were basically simulating what's happened to people with a COPD or severe asthma, for example. So there was uh, our nose was, lock was locked and we could just breathe through a straw. So that basically simulates what happens when you can't take much air in. And then we had a Cooper test, i.e. we had to basically, it's basically an endurance test, doesn't matter how. As I knew thoracic breathing, I could beat all the students. Many of them stopped after 20, 30, 40 seconds, whilst I could go on for minutes. And the reason for that is that as they could not breathe, they basically did this thing that you will observe a lot when you cough a lot and, and you have, say, an allergic reaction. Whilst I was managing to maintain my pressure in the abdominal cavity, to maintain through the action of the lower trapezius and the latissimus dorsi the extension of the thoracic spine, and as all this was mobilized, the only thing that I could do was breathe from the sides. And this is the power of breathing from the sides. It's a way of breathing that preserves the structure of your upper body, i.e. the opening of your lungs.